I'm Dr. Benita Rattan. I'm a doctor, but I'm also a cosmetic formulator specifically for skin of color. So today's video is an important one. It's about exfoliating skin of color. Now, unfortunately, there are many mistakes that get made, uh, which can lead to long-term repercussions because for us, our melanocytes are large and they are easily triggered. As I always say, one scratch, one bite or one burn and we hyperpigment. So we can't afford to irritate the skin or inflame the skin. So there are many uh, classic mistakes that get made, which I'm going to be discussing in this video. I'm going to be talking about how to exfoliate your skin step by step, the different types of exfoliation and which ones to avoid, and also Dr. V approved products. So as you know, none of my products that I recommend have ever been sponsored. They will never be sponsored. This entire channel is non-sponsored. And the reason why that's important is because you need an evidence-based library where you can just go and see which products are worth your money and which ones to maybe sidestep. If that sounds good to you, give me a thumbs up. Let's dive right in. So what's the problem with over exfoliating? Like what can actually happen? What can actually go wrong? Well, unfortunately, if you over exfoliate, you're gonna feel like your skin is very sensitive. It's gonna look red, it's gonna feel sore. And then if you put any actives on top of that, like retinol, for example, which is an alcohol, it's going to irritate the skin and burn the skin. So first things first is to make sure we always have a healthy skin barrier. The second thing that happens is sometimes if you over exfoliate, you start to see a waxy layer Layer, and that is the basal layer you're looking at. And people think, oh, this is what the gloss, the gloss skin that everyone's trying to achieve looks like. But actually, you have no protection of the skin and the skin is very vulnerable at this point, and especially from UV pollution, etc. And it's it's the exact opposite of what, you, of what we want. That's not a healthy skin barrier. The third thing that I see people doing is copying influencers and celebrities um, with DIY exfoliation um, using things in the kitchen, but this can really damage the skin barrier. And the classic thing I hear is, but if it's good enough to eat, it's good enough to put on my skin. The answer to that is no. We have gastric juices in our stomach. We have a very low ability is an acidic environment in our stomach. So we're able to tolerate lemon juice, for example. But if you put lemon juice on the face to exfoliate it, there is no buffer. The pH of the skin is about four to five, and then the pH of lemon juice is about two, and you've now burnt the skin and got pigmentation. This is why I always, I'm not a fan, honestly, of DIY, because the pH of everything is very different, that, you know, to what you would ingest, to what you would put on the skin. I know, you know, our parents and our grandparents and their parents, you know, used to use DIY, but that's all they had access to. They didn't have access to well-formulated products specifically for our face and our skin. And we are in a very privileged position that we do have access to those, and which is why I'm always going to recommend the products that have been tested um, for your skin. So what's the purpose of exfoliating? Is it even worth your time? So there are numerous benefits from exfoliating. First of all, you want to evenly exfoliate. That really is key because if you use a physical exfoliant, like a scrub, um, often you're going deeper into the skin, you're removing living skin cells, not just dead, uh, dead skin cells. So you want even exfoliation. The second reason I love it is because you are removing dead skin cells that are leading to dullness. So I'm 38 now. I know that with age, my skin is looking duller. And the reason is skin cell turnover is taking longer. So it may take me about 40 days for a skin cell turnover compared to when I was 20. And it took 20 days. And so guess what? You know, you're going to have more dead skin cells compacting at the top. And so light doesn't reflect as evenly. And so... That as soon as you remove that, your skin does look like it's younger, It's the skin cells are juicier and light reflects more evenly. So it does help with dull skin. It also helps with improving penetration of active. So imagine your top layer of skin is all scraggly and compacted. Now, how on earth is a serum supposed to penetrate that to get deeper into the skin? It can't. And so actually you get better penetration when you do exfoliate once a week. In addition, if you love to wear makeup like me, which I make wear makeup most of the days I film, uh, so that's about two days a week, then I I, re I know that my makeup goes on smoother when I've exfoliated. So you don't put makeup on onto freshly exfoliated skin, you do it the following day. So you would exfoliate at night and in the morning you will find that your makeup does go on smoother. I'd also say because exfoliation is essentially dissolving dead skin cells and the bonds between dead skin cells, it can lead to a little bit of inflammation. And so I always recommend you purchase an exfoliator that has anti-inflammatories in it 
plus your skin can feel dry after exfoliation, so you really want humectants in your uh, exfoliator too. The reason I say humectants is because a humectant is basically a water a magnet which holds water in that top layer of skin. Okay, so now we're gonna go through the different types of exfoliation. So there are three main types. We've got manual exfoliation, which tends to physically rip uh, dead skin off the face or the body. So people use tools or scrubs for that. The second is chemical exfoliation, which is just a mild acid that dissolves the bonds between the skin cells. And the third uh, is enzyme exfoliation. Um, it's something that's up and coming. You're gonna see it more in future brands. And it's basically similar to chemical exfoliation, but it's enzymes that dissolve the bonds between skin cells. Right, so let's start off talking about physical. So different types, uh, you've got washcloth or you've got uh, natural sponges. Some people use a mitt and dry exfoliate the body. Um, this gives instant gratification because you will literally see dead skin cells on the mitt. But this is not how you exfoliate skin of color because it's just too harsh. You have to soften the skin cells with warm water first before, if you're going to physically exfoliate them, you have to do that first. Otherwise you're going to lead to sensitivity of the skin, redness of the skin, and it's just something we never ever want. And then there are scrubs of the face. So the, you know, the classic one is St. Ives, um, but also there's DIY ones such as sugar or coffee DIY concoctions. The problem is it can also lead to micro tears and sensitivity of the skin. So again, it's not ideal for skin of color or for sensitive skin or for dry skin. Really for us, the mainstay is hydration of skin. That's what we need because we already have less ceramides than Caucasian skin. So our skin is already going to be drier and more prone to inflammation. So we have to take more care basically. Moving on to um, chemical exfoliation. So there's two types of chemical exfoliation. There's AHAs and BHAs. Those are the most common. There's also PHAs that are up and coming too, uh, but the, the classic one you're gonna have heard of are alpha hydroxy acids, which are basically mandelic acid, lactic acid, and glycolic acid. Now of those acids, my favorite of course is uh, mandelic acid, sorry. Mandelic acid is the largest molecule and so slowly penetrates the skin and gently exfoliates the skin. I love lactic acid too because it's also hydrating to the skin. My least favorite is glycolic acid because it is a tiny, tiny molecule, does fly through the skin and if you don't neutralize it properly, it can lead to hot spots and pigmentation in specific areas. So I'm not a fan of glycolic acid for skin of color. If you want to use it, use it at maximum 5%. I wouldn't recommend more than that. Lactic acid, I would use up to about 7% and mandelic acid, I'm happy for you to use up to 10%. So if you don't already have it, please do make sure you get your hands on a copy of Skin Revolution. I've got a whole section on exfoliation for skin of color in here. If you want all the information, just easy for you to flick through. Um, yeah, you can buy it, the link is down below and you can get it from Amazon, from Barnes & Noble, from W. Smith, Waterstones, etc. and it's been published by HarperCollins. So there are many benefits with exfoliating with AHAs. So it tends to smooth the skin, so it tends to smooth out wrinkles. It removes the dullness of the skin. It improves um, the appearance of large pores. It tends to minimize the appearance of pores. It tends to immediately remove any dull or pigmented skin. The mistake is that people think with hyperpigmentation, for example, melasma, if you exfoliate the skin, immediately your skin looks brighter. The problem is it is a temporary solution because you are only removing the top layer of dead skin cells. You haven't treated the root cause, which is a hyperactive melanocyte, the cell producing the pigment melanin. So if hyperpigmentation is one of the issues, please go and watch my whole hyperpigmentation playlist on how to treat hyperpigmentation at the root rather than just exfoliating at the top. It's one of the steps you should be doing, but it's not going to treat it long term. The next is BHA. So that's another name is called salicylic acid. So salicylic acid is fat soluble, goes into the pore, penetrates into the pore and unclogs it. So it's great for oily, acne prone skin or congested pores. And then we've got PHAs. So that's things like gluconolactone, for example. They have similar properties to AHAs, but they are less irritating to the skin. And so they're better for dry or sensitive skin. I love gluconolactone for skin of color and I actually formulate with it in my exfoliator balm that I make from my own body. Um, in that balm, I put in AHA, BHA, and PHA. So literally all three forms of chemical exfoliators. For me, my main skincare concerns for the body is as I age and through weight fluctuations, I've had two babies, weight fluctuations have meant that skin is looser than it was 
before. <laughs> so for me, um, exfoliation, uh, chemical exfoliation really was key for my body to keep it glowing and making it feel how I wanted it to feel. <laughs> Moving on to enzyme exfoliation. I'm not a fan of enzyme exfoliation. Unfortunately, enzymes are very sensitive to pH changes and temperature changes. Plus, you can react to them. So things like bromelain or papain, if you see those ingredients on the inky list, the ingredients list at the back of your exfoliator, it's it's just not something I'd recommend for skin of color because for us, I'm trying to minimize the chance of any form of reaction or inflammation, but also getting the same benefit. So what are the classic mistakes that get made with exfoliation? So I'm going to go through them now. Number one, you want to avoid irritating ingredients on top of freshly exfoliated skin. So for example, I would never put on benzoyl peroxide or retinol on top of skin that's had AHA exfoliation. Now, if you use BHA, salicylic acid is very common in a skincare routine for oily acne prone skin to have salicylic acid, benzoyl peroxide and vitamin A. I would just opt for maybe separating when you do exfoliation and when you do your retinol or if you're going to exfoliate with salicylic acid, maybe use a different form of vitamin A that's not as irritating as retinol. So for example, retinaldehyde. Next thing I say is avoid body exfoliation for the face. So for example, the body exfoliator I've made for my body, the skin is much thicker than my face. So for my face, I made exfoliate to glow, which is this one. This is 5% mandelic plus 5% lactic acid with humectants and anti-inflammatories, but this isn't going to be strong enough for my body. So the body one I made was AHA, BHA, P but I wouldn't put that on my face. So you want a different exfoliator for the body as you want for the face. Avoid all exfoliation tools on the face or the body. Um, they're too harsh, they're unnecessary and they're a bit of a marketing gimmick. So I would just sidestep those if I'm honest. If you have dry skin or sensitive skin or a damaged skin barrier, then please do not exfoliate. I've seen this mistake happen far too many times and it honestly just makes the whole situation far worse. In addition, if you've just exfoliated the face or the body, don't go into steam or sauna because you are now leading to more inflammation in an area that is fresh and is unprotected. I'd also encourage you to exfoliate at nighttime, not during the day, because um, as soon as you go out into the day, you have UV hitting the skin and pollution hitting the skin and just the general weather, whether it's cold, hot, raining, all leads to trauma of the skin. So you don't want to do that on freshly exfoliated skin. So exfoliate the night before, please. And make sure you wear your SPF 50 the following day because the skin may feel more sensitive. I would also tell you not to apply makeup directly onto exfoliated skin. So exfoliate the night before again and you can put makeup on the next day. As I said before, when you exfoliate, it does lead to irritation of the skin. And so on top, you really must moisturize and protect that skin. So you want to moisturize with a fatty, nafe safe moisturizer, meaning no denatured alcohol, no fragrance, no essential oils. And you want to have ideally anti-inflammatories in the moisturizer. Plus you want humectants in the moisturizer. Those are water magnets. So it basically hydrates the skin and you will feel your skin completely feeling more supple, younger, and looking more delicious once you just do the complete those two steps. So you need to exfoliate first, followed by your moisturizer. So for me, that's of course, CeraPep Brightening Moisturizer from the Dr. Mita Rattan range. So I do exfoliate to glow first, followed by my CeraPep. So moving on to your skin type and which is the best exfoliator for you. So if you have oily acne prone skin, then I have a few options for you. First one is Paula's Choice 2% BHA. The second one is the Me Plus Salicylic Acid um, from Superdrug, which is also excellent. It's also nave safe. Um, the next one is the Ordinary Salicylic Acid. Either So I, I love their mask. I'm producing an acne range for skin of color um, next March uh, 2022 and that's for acne, red marks and brown marks and there's an exfoliator in there too which has also got green tea extract and glycerin in it so it's got antioxidants in it plus it's anti-inflammatory and soothing to the skin so when that's out I will let you know about it. Moving on to normal combination skin so there are a few options the first one is youth to the people um, I really love this product it's mandelic acid 
plus superfood. So this is AHA plus BHA and it's safe for skin of color. So it's Mendelic plus lactic acid. And I do love combining AHA with BHA, especially if you're on the run up to your period and you're like me and you break out the week before your period. I actually cyclically change my skincare based on where I am in my cycle. So if you're likely to break out the week before your period, then you want to change your exfoliator to a salicylic acid one. The second product I love is from Face Theory. It's called Mendeli Bright 10% Mandelic Acid, which I recommend. The next one is if you have more sensitive skin, then I like Wish Trend Mandelic Acid 5%. And if your skin is similar to mine, so for me it's anti-aging, brightening, and I get melasma, then I formulated Exfoliate to Glow for that, which is 5% Mandelic Acid, 5% Lactic Acid, plus 7% Glycerin, which is the humectant, plus I added Centella Asiatica, which is an anti-inflammatory. So the link for that is also down below in the description box. Don't forget to hit that notification bell because I'm in the comment section for one hour at the launch of every single video so make sure you subscribe do follow me on instagram where i do a lot of polls and a lot of the back end happens on instagram before i bring it to youtube so i ask you a lot of questions on that so that's dr vita rattan and skincare by dr v and i'm also on tiktok which is dr vita rattan too thank you so much for watching and i'll see you next time bye